putting this together. Um, Melina, recall, I'm going to stand on, on cue there, also known as a food activist, is an educator, community organizer, and an entrepreneur. She's dedicated to actively pursuing positive change in food systems and help and healthy triple bottom line broadly. Recent work includes um, her work as an adjunct professor at Montclair State University, Department of Health and Nutrition Sciences, teaching food activism, creating and leading Gorilla Gardening Montclair, which was a community activity encouraging people to grow their own, eat more vegetables, and create an edible landscape. Creating public forums and information events on the need for healthy food with a focus on food drives. Consulting to Madre on harvesting hope, a campaign to support the work of indigenous women farmers in Nicaragua. She's also a consultant to Education, a culinary education program for children as partnerships coordinator. And she's a founder and owner of Box Organics, a non-traditional CSA co-op bringing local organic produce to, mem to members in the Montclair region. She also has worked with Montclair School District to improve their food services program. She'll come up to that after Stace. Thank you. Um, yeah, I'm just going to give a little bit of a background and how advocacy came to be. Um, my background, as uh, Deb said, is really in environmental policy. So I came to the food world from a completely different place, it seems. Um, but I had a big interest as I was going through my graduate program in how urban communities engage in their environment and how to get people interested in environmental issues when they're living in cities. Um, as Deb said, this was in the late 90s, and I got really involved with New York City Community Gardens. This was a huge initiative under the Giuliani administration. They were bulldozing gardens for affordable housing. They're still doing that now, but I started to volunteer there, and I started to see how people really got excited about being outdoors and touching plants and bugs and getting engaged in their environment. So it became a huge passion of mine. Um, and sort of Fast forward a bunch of years, I went down to Trenton to work in the Department of Community Affairs uh, at the Office of Smart Growth, which doesn't exist anymore. Um, consistent, I will, I will be, is a consistent theme in my life. Um, the Department of Community Affairs Office of Smart Growth was looking at, obviously, smart growth and bikeable, walkable communities, but I went there to hopefully infuse some kind of community garden, <coughs> urban farming um, discussion. And ironically enough, there was a whole lot of talk about what to do with the city of Camden around all the demolition properties. And so I started to go down to Camden and drive around and look at properties that were being demoed and think about how the state, this is when the state was managing properties in Camden um, prior to the, court, to the Christie administration, um, and work with them to think about transforming some of these vacant lots. So I was at DCA working at this under a vacant lot stabilization initiative. That was the language. And so I always laugh because it's like, I feel like I go to these offices and I have the same goal in mind and I just call it something else. So it's like, whatever you want to call it today, fine. So it was vacant lot stabilization. Um, and I stayed away from environmental talk because they really wanted to talk about economic development. So I just said, fine, well, it's called vacant lot stabilization. Let's figure out how do we get these properties back on tax rolls, what it's costing you to do your clean and lean program. And what is the cost benefit analysis of all the dumping? And this is where my garbage background comes in. And what is the prop, you know, all this stuff. Um, but election time came, the administration changed, and the Office of Smart Growth, I could tell, was sort of fizzling out, and this interest was sort of headed in a different direction. Um, at the same time, the Department of Health got a four or five year uh, cooperative agreement from CDC to do a child's obesity initiative. And I was asked to come over there to do um, obesity prevention. And I was like, I don't care. Great, we're going to do obesity prevention now. Same thing. Let's <laughs> so instead of vacant lot stabilization, let's call it obesity prevention. Um, and as many, I don't know if anyone here knows me well, but well enough to know that I absolutely hate the New Jersey Department of Health. I worked there for four years. They are the <laughs> number one barrier to health in New Jersey. Absolutely hands down. I have like no shame in saying it. I, um, I'm sure they were happy to see me go when I left. I am also happy to see, I'm also happy to leave there, but I will talk a little bit about my experience there. And I'm happy to help you. Um, <laughs> they are my favorite people to walk into a meeting and see because they just want to die. When they see <laughs> and I'm like, <laughs> 
Um, but I spent four years there as a contractor. I only wish Beth Fien was here to sort of like just help, like um, she, she shares my mutual um, disdain for them. But the reason why is because they got all of this money, millions and millions and millions of dollars to do obesity prevention work. And the short of it is that I handed up the food access initiative piece of it. There was a physical activity component, a food access component, a breastfeeding component, all the things that contributed to childhood obesity. And the department itself was, it's, it, was it was focused on policy too, let me say that. So I was looking at land use changes and some of the initiatives they have around corner stores and grocery stores. And every time we would map out these initiatives, we would find that the policy change that needed to occur to encourage these things happened was at the Department of Health itself, so the WIC office, my favorite, um, will not give out WIC licenses. Um, the WIC office won't give out licenses to grocery stores coming into urban centers. They won't give out farmers mar they won't give out WIC licenses to farmers markets to um, urban farmers. They won't give out too many WIC licenses because of a mapping thing. They won't they have all of these reasons why they can't do any of the things that their other offices are promoting. So they have all of this stuff going on, and then when you really get into it with them, um, they call the USDA, who actually has no control over any of these things at all, but um, or Department of Agriculture, and in any way. So they get into these little tangled up web, and it's very frustrating. So when I left the Department of Health, um, long ago while I was there, I worked very hard to get them to focus on urban agriculture because for me this was the best, and of course, like I said, that's always my agenda. So I was trying to push them to look at urban farming and look at community gardening and really promote it and make the policy changes that need to happen. And they wouldn't. Um, and I finally said, okay, that's fine. I'm just gonna, you know, settle down here and finish out my time. And while I was there, I created um, sort of a shadow of what they were doing called Ag in the City, which was a partnership and a network and a group of people coming together around urban agriculture and looking at policy initiatives. Um, and then in June, I left the department at the end of the funding um, and then opened them for all the documents that they wouldn't share with me while I worked there. <laughs> so now I have all the information that they wouldn't share with me and the, the know-how inside, from inside the department. And Ag in the City was born out of the frustration of working there and their refusal to cooperate. Um, and Ag in the City is generally, I would say, like an advocacy organization. And as Deb said, the website is becoming a clearinghouse for all this information around urban agriculture and community farming. Um, we did a lot of convening of partners and people in a bunch of different cities. The website is supposed to be and hopefully will soon have tremendous amounts of literature and resources. I'm working very closely with um, the Rutgers School of Landscape Architecture. We did a summer of uh, tours around New Jersey. We have a featured farm every week, so there's like video clips and photos of all the community gardeners and farmers from a whole bunch of different cities. We host one every week or so on the website. There's a mapping component that's going to be launched soon. Um, and I'm just trying to go through my list of things that is happening around Ag in the City. Um, in October, on Food Day, we're going to have a statewide conference in Newark, um, and we're developing that agenda right now and sort of pulling together the pieces of it. And we'll be going out for speakers. And the idea for that conference is to do a plenary, plenary in the morning, I think, and then the afternoons will be trainings for urban farmers. So. You know, I, and, I, and it's taken a long time for Ag in the City to sort of find its way, but um, it's really going to just be a resource, or I've called it a trade association, because I like to think of community gardeners moving into a business model, or moving into, from community gardening, into an urban farming model, which is a transition that's really, really hard, and as Mikey had talked about, the logistics and, you know, the, the distribution mechanism isn't there, so it's exploring all of that stuff. Um, and that conference will start to, I think, spark that conversation and bring some of the key players in. And of course, my panel will probably be on policy development and health and, you know, looking at where the policy changes need to be. And since now I'm on the outside of the health department, I can probably lobby a little bit harder than I had um, to get some of those changes done. And as Deb said, um, I do a lot of government affairs work 
uh, for New Jersey Farm to School, and there's a bunch of bills, there's a package of bills up for them, and so we're going to probably work on a package of bills for Ag in the City and some of the statewide policy changes that need to happen um, to promote urban ag and food access. And Great, in this segment too, we're going to have a little time for, for Q&A, so I'm almost be coming back to you if you want to do the hang a little bit yes. when, when you're done with your main points there. Yeah, yeah no, Lena can come up. I just wanted to get like a. Okay, so the, was, did Dodge originally convene at City? So you yeah, the initial on. the initial conference was called Ag in the City, and um, it was held down in Burlington at the uh, Rutgers. No, it was the Rutgers. Eco Complex, Rutgers Eco Complex, um, and it was like an invitation only, only focused on urban ag, and it was. Totally sold out. We convened, I think, like a hundred and some odd people. And the conversation was that we need a statewide organization to focus on urban agriculture and provide us some resources, do the policy stuff, do you know the stuff in Trenton that needs to happen, get the Farm Bureau recognizing urban farmers as farmers, and um, you know, really in, in that in, within that conversation, it was also about finding what is urban ag, what is an urban farmer, you know, policy terms that need to happen. So that Ag City came out of um, not just my time at the Department of Health, but that conference and that conversation, and then we just named the organization Ag City because the conference was named Ag. Yeah, Dodge funded it. Isles has been a huge um, supporter. We had written the grant with them to get the money for the conference for food day. Um, so, yeah, yeah that's and that. Jersey City was represented. It was yep. the first time yep. that Adopt-A-Lot presented, and it was also... Tanya the, came and spoke on um, Adopt-A-Lot. It was also the case that um, the Bokashi model, what we're trying to replicate here, and what was happening on the Lower East Side with that garden exchange presented. They're now today, they were just first starting out, but one community garden is processing three tons of food. Okay, so it's really great. And then most recently, your video, you know, your video team came here. We went around yes. with the Adopt-a-Lot program. We brought them around. There so is an enormous amount of footage. Um, Beth Bean is my conference coordinator, and she just went through it all um, last night. Uh, the students uh, from the 